Okay, everyone. Well, welcome back. As you can see, I got the rotor put back up in there. And um, sure enough, when I went to put the drum in there, because lots of times I got to have um, a dad on the forklift, and I'll be up there behind the engine in order to get that, with a pry bar, in order to get that um, a rotor to um, line up and go on to the PTO shaft. Well, sure enough, this time when I, went, when I put the thing in there, once I started getting it lined up, I got up in behind there, I took a pry bar, did a little bit of wiggling, and it jumped on. And so, not too often does that happen, happen that easy. And so the rotor's all in. Now I'm gonna start taking these chains off. As you can see, I've already lowered it down on that um, a little one by four right there. And so it's resting on that. So we'll go ahead and start loosening up these chain, chain binders. There we go. Okay, that's got that one. I thought. A little more. There we go. Okay, there's that one. Get the chain unhooked. Okay, there goes the chain. Well, let's see here, I'll see if I can. Okay, there we are. I got my work light in there. That's why it's kind of lit up down, down there at the end. But um, other, other than that though, like I say, it, it actually lined up easier than normal. So that, that did make it nice. And so um, I'll go ahead and, um, like I say, I gotta get that chain binder right there all taken out. So I'll put you back in my pocket. There we go. We got just a little bit of rain coming down. Thankfully, nothing super heavy. Okay, there's that one. Get it unhooked. But like I've said before, 
I'm glad I, I was able to catch this problem before um, before summertime because I always use this this combine in the summer to uh, harvest rye and um, having corn dust inside that rotor is bad enough you get working with uh, rye dust that's like uh, working around fiberglass insulation so that that's real nice to work with on a nice hot day and you got old itchy rye dust dropping it down on top of you okay and like I say this big strap here is the one that we use here on the bean head we got two back here right there's one here's the other one uh, I gotta remember there we go goes in that hook there comes over down behind the PTO and hooks on right there Okay, give a little bit more of a pull. There we go, that's got that. Hard to believe we actually, we've had this combine and this big bean head now for, uh, well, four years. We got it in the winter of 2018. Combine came from uh, northern Iowa. Actually, it was north of uh, about an hour, almost an hour north of Waterloo, Iowa. And um, uh, the bean head came out of um, came from a dealer over by uh, Kokomo, Indiana. And then uh, the big my big corn head, which uh, here on my YouTube channel. I've not shown any of that, but um, yeah, you st if you stick around long enough, you'll see it this fall. But um, it would have actually it would have been the first year of um, uh, that we had this machine in 2018. That fall, I used um, a, we had a our one corn head that we ran on our smaller combines was um uh, was was made um was designed when, when we got it to um fit on this machine here and uh, because this one here this combine has a has a bigger throat because it's got lateral tilt this um uh, this plate piece right here will actually rock back and forth like that and um to accommodate a wide head and so um like i say our one our one corn head it was it's a six row it, um, it had been uh, retrofitted back when we got it, or actually before we got it, to um, a fit on a lateral tilt. And so in 2018, we, we ran that six row corn head. But in 2019, I was able to find a, um, an eight row corn head like that a guy had posted for sale and um he was actually northwestern illinois southwest of rockford illinois and so um struck a deal and dad and i ran over there one day and picked it up and brought it back home and so that big corn hit has been nice and so we'll go ahead and get the gas tank turned on here on the forklift Oh, 
And we're done with this little ratchet strap, so we'll go ahead and take this off. Okay, I need to jump up here behind the motor and get my work light out of here. Along with the pry bars. Okay. I get you out of my pocket here that you can see it better. Now you can sort of see it there through that uh, grate. That's actually called the, this part here is actually called the cotton cave. But yeah, right there is through that notch. Get my light out of here. There we are. Yeah, there we are down the side there. So should be, hopefully we are good to go. And right there are those um, uh, two strips of helical bar. And then right here is that other piece I put in. And so, like I say, I'm hoping that will um, that'll stop that jam, that potential, that, that plugging issue and that's what appeared to have actually broke that up here on top. Okay, we are done up here as far as I know, so we go ahead and shut the big door down. It just has a big door that comes down behind it. And through the latch that's got it basically it looks just like the latch on the back of a, um, a semi van bed just swing that down latch it in behind that lock it in you're good to go Okay, and right there is all the hardware that I need for getting that rotor tied back back in. <clears throat> I 
go ahead and shut that thing back off. Then here, actually here after a while, my cut, my cousin borrowed one of our tractors, that way he could drive it to school. For the school's FFA week deal. And so, hopefully he'll be heading back this way here after a while. But anyway, okay, right there's all my mounting hardware. And next thing I need is this big stop sign. Actually, before that. Okay. I never thought when I had the forklift up here to have, um, I should have pushed this little board farther back. I'll take and pry up on this thing somehow without breaking something. boy it don't want to pry up too easily i mean i'm gonna get a i'm gonna have, gonna have to get the block and actually pry down maybe i can use this four by six Maybe not. There we go. Okay. I was able to get that block show farther back in there because like I say, I got to put the stop sign on. Then I can take that block out through that little hole that's cut in the stop sign. But um, this will let me get up here and start getting stuff mounted up and get the big bearing out here on the end lined up and actually put back into the stop sign. Yeah, we can go ahead and shut that light off. I'm done with that for right now. However, come to think of it, let me you know, pull that forklift back up here. That way I can leave my little magnetic tray sit right there. That way all I, all I have to do is turn around and grab it. There we go. Oh, 
Well, we got, got a little bit of light rain coming back down. I don't know if you can hear that or not, but that's what's hitting the roof right now. It's been kind of... Okay, there we go on that one. It's been kind of off and on all day. Like I say, thankfully, it's nothing. It's not been anything super hard and heavy. Okay. All right, we're stuck on those stud bolts right there. Let's go ahead and I'll start getting... I can go ahead and start getting these little jam nuts and lock washers put back on. That way, make it a little bit easier to hold in place. But like I say, pull, pulling the rotor out of a gleaner combine is a lot easier than a um, you know, John Deere case, New Holland. Because um, I think I've said before, I've, hel I've helped my neighbor on his um, 8120 case combine. It's a big machine. And um, it makes a bed you got to take and drop the throat of the machine clear off. And then the rotor drum goes out underneath the cab down there, below the cab and above the front axle. And so that's the nice thing with the gleaner, it's pretty simple. Okay, it's getting basically all the top, and I'm coming down here on the bottom for these stud bolts. Okay, that should have everything. Now, I gotta get the pry bar and start getting that lined up into that hole. In fact, actually, I may have to take, I may have to pull that sensor pick up off. In fact, why don't we just do that right now? That's actually the, the pickup that, um, reads the RPM of the rotor. Well, you know what, I mean, that'll work right there. I can just take and tip it off the side and just leave the one bolt that's got the wire. Like I said, it's just like a little square pickup deal. Leave it like that. And I'll put that one bolt back in after I get that um, 
bearing in place. All right, need my pry bar. close not quite there I'll go ahead and spin all all these in and see if um, uh, that'll help to draw that stop sign in place and um, let that hole drop right down around that cast bearing carrier. Okay, that's got the stop sign basically bottomed out against the main wall. So let's see here. Okay, I don't know how well you can see that. Trying to get that thing lined up there. Okay, it's actually got the, it's caught right there on that bottom lip. I gotta wash my fingers though. Let's go ahead and see if we can get the two bottom bolts popped in. Okay, there's that one. Try not to shake anything. As long as it would just sit right there, I can get the two bottom bolts in. And that'll hold it on that lip. Oh, I see I, I Loctited these when I put them on last fall. I'm going to have to take and get my Loctite. Well, when I go to get my Loctite, that'll be a good spot to put a break in the video. Okay, let's get the bolt through. And now I'll see if I can get them top bolts to line up. That carrier, it's in here on the bottom, but it's, it's tipped out on top. And... Well, that one just barely fit. <laughs> uh -oh.
trying to wiggle that thing around without <clears throat> without getting a smashed finger. Okay, I may have to, I'm going to have to take and put that, if I can get the fit, I'm going to have to put that jam nut on that without the washer off the bat. Okay, let's get the nut started. Gonna jump over and see if I can get the fourth one in. There we go. Okay, let's get all four bolts in. And um, like I said, I need my Loctite and so um, I think that'll be a good spot to put a break to this video. Well, I guess I'm going about a half hour long. <laughs> so we'll be back here after a while. 